Hey YouTube viewers, it's Chris with LG Squared. I'm here at the Contemporary High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia. And this video is about the framing of the structure. It is 12 inches on center. A lot of questions out there about why we're using 12 inches as opposed to the standard 16 or even 24 inches on center, which uh, might be used with advanced framing techniques to allow for more insulation in the cavities. Well, we don't have any insulation in the cavities. We're putting everything to the outside, and that's a big reason why we can use 12 inches on center, but we also need this 12 inches on center for sheer strength, okay? This is the north wall, and then we also have the 12 inches on center at the south wall. Our structural engineer, Keystone Structural Engineering, uh, Brendan Crowley, always designs our structures to, to exceed the building code. It's what we, what we ask for because as you, as you know, building code is a minimum that you can build to, and when you're building high performance or when you're building long-term durable homes, where it's appropriate, you do exceed the code to make sure we're not building just a 20-year home. So why are we doing 12 inches on center? Well, again, it's the shear wall. With the half-inch plywood and 12 inches on center, we've got this really robust shear wall to, to prevent this home from moving from side to side, which helps with the durability. It helps make sure that all the materials aren't moving around and weakening joints and allowing those uh, uh, tightly sealed cracks, joints, penetrations, and things from moving around and then opening back up and losing our, um, the, the, air, the, the continuous air barrier that we have around the structure. So here's how we can get away with it. As I said, the, the, the cavities is where most homes put the insulation. In our case, we've put all of the insulation to the outside. And what this does is allows, one, for the R value of the insulation to be continuous around the entire structure. So we don't lose any of that R value from the studs or any other materials inside the cavity. So like when you have an electrical box or a light switch, all of that reduces the R value because you take the average or the effective R value of an assembly. With the insulation to the outside, the, the only things that reduce the R value are the windows and any penetrations going through that like a, like a pipe or, or, or a ventilation an exhaust duct or something like that. As opposed to when it's in the cavities, it's every stud, whether it's 16 or 24 inches on center or 12. Each one of these studs is a thermal bridge. That's why the, the, these, you get about R1 out of each one of these studs and the cavity insulation might be 15, might be, uh, might be more. And if you take 15 and you average out the R1 and then all of your electrical boxes and any other penetrations, you end up with a much lower R value, uh, somewhere in the R11, R12, maybe even lower, depending on how much framing and how much you have in the wall. Here we've got everything to the outside. We've got our sheathing layer here. This is our two by four. This is the sheathing layer. That puts the temperature of this, of this sheathing much closer to the interior temperature, which might be say 75 uh, in the summer and uh, maybe close to 68 in the winter. And you're gonna lose maybe about a degree uh, across that sheathing layer at most, depending on how much insulation. Here we have four inches on the walls, six inches on the roof. That insulation follows it all the way down underneath the slab and about two to four feet into underneath the, underneath that slab. This four inch of insulation does a lot of things for us. We've, well, it's the insulation for the building, but it serves as a thermal break for these, these studs, so we're not losing all that heat through here. We're getting a continuous four inches around the entire building. That's the answer to that one. We'll see you next time. Thanks for checking us out.